Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Space Engineers. I apologize for lack of videos, I've been down with the flu, and Mother Nature was nice and kind to me, and decided to give me what I thought was going to be a 24 hour, and uh, needless to say, it's been close to a week, but I'm starting to do a little bit better. Uh, I'm just messing around with the rotor right now, I'm sort of a spring-loaded device, uh, really simple basically, all I've done is uh, adjusted the braking torque. Well, not really the braking torque, but the, the torque itself. So when I jump on it, my character's weight is enough to push it back down, but it's enough to push it back up. Uh, it's kind of hard to fine-tune, but if you counterweight it on the other side, it'd be a little easier to do. And I sort of have an idea I want to use this for, and sometimes it sticks, I don't know why. Anyway, uh, there's been a few suggestions in the last video, and there's a few changes I have made. Uh, one of them is, let me bring this menu up. Uh... What I've done is I've turned, I've set my day cycle to a full 24 hours, in like real time. So it's 1,440 minutes. And what I'm going to do for video purposes is I will actually adjust the time of day offset. So, you know, we always have recording quality light levels. Uh, another one I did, I actually forgot to mention this, was the trash removal. That's not what I wanted, trash removal. How did I change over to that? I don't know. I'll fix that in a second here. Um, originally, it was set uh, with blocks less than five, 20. Um, even 20 blocks is something I'm not really too worried about because that one was the last time I think I built anything that's under 20 blocks except for this. But even then, it's all about being powered and yada, yada, yada. But for the sake of it, I just disabled the trash removal, and I hope that actually does disable it. Not that I'm worried about anything like that. Okay, and we get out of here, and, oh yes, uh, I gotta get back into, what was it, F6? There we go. Yes, uh, the other one I did was, um, oh yes, uh, um, the UI background. It was suggested I, that I increase the transparency so I can actually see what I'm working on while I'm making adjustments, and that's what I've done. Uh, I have been working on this thing a little bit. I'm not gonna bother doing any more work to it, but just to give you, show you that I can actually adjust things and still see in here. Um, I have tried about 20 different times as far as timing goes and, you know, different things like trying to toggle the auto lock on and off with the feet so that they're only going to auto lock when the foot's going down. But yeah, it still comes into a timing issue. The timing does tend to go out where it'll go at the normal two seconds and then all of a sudden it'll switch to a quick one second and then back to two. It could be it could be recording issues, it could be other different things. Uh, I have sort of thought about what could be done. It would more or less involve sticking a piston in here between the, the ankle and the foot and that's just so when the foot goes down, yeah, I'll deal with that in a sec, uh, that the piston pushes the foot down to make contact with the ground before it moves on to the next step. Um, I will come back to this project. I do want to do this a little bit bigger scale and more complexity to it, but of course I will need more timer blocks. So it's going to be it's going to be an interesting project to work on. Uh, but today's project is even going to be more interesting. And I just wanted to run over and check this out because I haven't been checking out too, too many of these. Actually, I'm almost out of power. I shouldn't be doing this. Uh, still haven't found anything good. Found another rainbow rifle. Ooh. Uh, maybe if I get enough of them, I can sell them on Steam and buy a cheap game for a buck. Uh, let's see what we get here. And as far yeah, as far as the trash removal settings go, but the only thing that would be available for a trash removal would be these things. But you know, I usually take these things apart anyways. You know, free materials can't claim. Ooh, I have to get a whole rainbow set now. Too bad it's worth nothing. But yeah, uh, one of the things that I've wanted to do for a long time was make. A giant walking spider, similar to uh, what's in Wild Wild West. Now, I have tried it a few times. Uh, I'll bring up some clips here of my previous videos. Uh, my first attempt was in Kerbal Space Program. Uh, well, first of all, most of my attempts have been vanilla. I try to play in a vanilla aspect just because, you know, mods are great, but mods also cause uh, numerous issues, especially with mod updaters or mod creators are constantly updating their mods because then you usually have to constantly update your mod and then there's version conflicts so it might the mod might be updated for a previous version like with Kerbal Space Program and Minecraft you got mods that stretch two years of versions so yeah anyways uh, so that was the first attempt with uh, Kerbal Space Program as you can see it's just 
not going anywhere. It's just walking in place. And then, and I have tried with Besiege. You know, Besiege, yeah, in a vanilla aspect, is not the greatest. Uh, there's been a lot of, as you can see, really jerkiness in the legs and and s structural integrity issues. I've noticed. Like uh, I can't remember if I actually checked to see if I adjust the speed of those uh, steering hinges or whatever, but yeah, what didn't really work out too well. And then, of course, there's always good old Planet Nomads. And while that hasn't been uh, necessarily the greatest, you know, I tried many different attempts on that. I'm just trying to find my marker here. Uh, I got that those clips showing up right now. Uh, hmm. And it helps if I do this. I did actually mark it Mars Flats. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, well, yeah, uh, that was one of those projects so that in Planet Nomads where it was just getting... The harder I tried, the bigger it got, and the bigger it got, the harder I had to try, and the bigger it got, and it was sort of like a snowball effect. So I've been thinking about this one, and I think this might actually work. And the reason why I was showing that spring design there, well, it's not really a spring, it's just basically a weak motor with an automatic return system on it. But I want to... There's going to be a slight, I won't say issue, but something we have to think about as far as um, as far as the walking goes because of the way the, the spider's legs walk. And I think this might have been one of the reasons why I've had so many troubles actually building this project. Uh, but we are actually coming up to the flats here. This is the area I saw when I was coming, in down, coming down for the first time. I have thought about making a, some sort of vehicle to tra traverse the Martian landscape here, but... Uh, next episode, we're actually going to be heading back to Earth-like. We're going to go back and continue on, continue on one of the many, many, many projects I've started and have yet to complete. Uh, we're going to do a bit of an upgrade to the Stellar Ray to get a second jump drive on there and another ship. But, yeah, I'm thinking about going here. You know, it's not going to be super, super huge, but it's going to be about 100 meters tall, I think. And this could be a little bit flatter. I was actually thinking about maybe even... Uh, doing a quick teleport out to the earth like there and see how it looks out there you know i know there's uh deserty areas but you know a giant walking spider just seems perfect on mars but let's see what we have up top here i might even start right up top here i oh nah, as far as the holes and all that stuff go i can always adjust the limits of the legs this is actually a good spot right here so let's get back on my feet and we're going to go ahead and we're going to start building up. I haven't really thought about how big I want the frame. Uh, the frame is going to be a fair size. Uh, it is going to be a spider after all. Uh, let me, yes, find the right buttons. All right, so let's go for a nice dark brown. Because it is a spider, after all. And it's going to be a creepy one at that, too. And this is just going to be my pillar for going up, because we are going to go about 100 meters up. So I'm going to go ahead and place a GPS here, so I know how high to go. All right, and... Oh, helps if I actually do right. Uh, ground zero, why not? Because we're actually at the ground. So now I'm going to uh, take care of one thing here, and I'm ready to begin. Uh, another thing I did too is I actually turned my auto save off, or down to 20 minutes just because so let's see ground zero is there so I'm just going to go up until it says 100 meters and that's how high the spider is going to be and my keyboard is starting to act up on me again go figure I think it's just a bluetooth thing maybe I need to update my bluetooth drivers or just go, ba go back to old school and get a wired mouse and keyboard hopefully when it's a little bit quieter but I gotta be careful too, because you know I don't want to be hit by these blocks, especially all the way out here. Uh, well, I would respawn over there, but anyways. So we're gonna go up a little bit more. So I'm at 95. So we'll put ah, a couple more blocks, just because. All right, and this is gonna be our main block. This is where our frame's gonna start. Everything down below is gonna actually get taken out. Now, as far as uh, the size goes. There's going to be, of course, eight legs, and i got to make sure I have room for them to move. Uh, which way are we going to be walking? We're going to go this way. All right, and then uh, I'll make this the front. Uh, this is going to be a basic frame for the legs, so... Let's actually go from this side. 
I do want to have at least, because there's going to be rotors on the top here for rotational purposes, and I want to make sure I have enough room for them to move so they don't hit in each other. Plus, at the same time, when the legs stretch out, they're going to need more room to actually move, but we'll get into that. Um, uh, let me get something laid out, and I'll bring you back. Okay, I've got the the basic frame set up. Uh, I had to run back to the base to get a few more supplies, get some oxygen, hydrogen, and of course get a, a, a ways of tra actually charging myself and filling up my bottles when I need be. Uh, we're actually going to park this right underneath because we're going to need the leg room here. Okay, so I'm going to drop it right down here just for now. Uh, I had to put the big reactor on here. I, for some reason I thought the small reactor actually Output more power, but it doesn't. Anyways, so that is good. So that's going. So now we go up here. This is doesn't look too big now, but wait till we start getting the fun stuff on. So what I will have to do is uh, because I want to be able to know what I've got where, I'm going to put a terminal on here, so I can start labeling all the. Let's actually get back on the other other bar there. There we go. Start labeling all the parts as I put them on. Uh, I have absolutely no idea where the center is. I don't think it really matters because it's just a terminal. Alright, so we will put that on. Uh, I need displays. I don't care because it's functional. Gotta love that functional hack. Alright, so let's go ahead and start with our pistons. Uh, go and grab the brown again. So there's going to be eight legs. Uh, I'm going to place one here and then... Uh, I actually do have to num number these as I go. So there's going to be one here. There's going to be seven blocks in between each one. So one there. There's going to be one here. There's going to be one here. And then one at the end. And that's going to be on both sides. So let me get these in and uh, numbered and labeled so I know what's what. And I'll bring you back. Okay, after a much extended return trip back to the, the base there to get more supplies, I am back. And I do have the rotors set up. I have not configured anything yet. Uh... I'm not going to worry about that. I already hit up a few more. I didn't get too much. I got a, another cow helmet and a rainbow outfit. You know, boring stuff. Uh, so before I go on, what I need to do, uh, yes, I do actually, I named them shoulder left, one, two, three, four, shoulder right, one, two, three, four, and I put the, the joint name in the beginning, so if I ever need to make adjustments, I can. But speaking of adjustments, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this braking torque all the way to the max, because I'm going to need it. Uh, just because, in case things go wrong. So anyways, uh, I do need to start setting up, uh, can, that's the wrong hotbar, uh, setting up limits of rotation and stuff like that. And, uh, this is something I have worked on before, like I said. Uh, basically what's going to happen is this rotor here is going to be, this is, it's going to be, this is going to be its, one of its limits, it's either upper or lower limit, so it's going to only come back to here, and then it's going to move forward to about 10 degrees, and then back to here. This one here, it's going to be about 5 degrees either side, uh, hopefully with 5 degrees inwards this way, it's not going to interfere with the leg going 5 degrees inwards this way. And then at the same time with this one here, it's going to be locked at zero here, and get about 10 degrees out. So now what we need to do is we need to start getting uh, some limit, some appendages going. Uh, there is going to be multiple rotors on this. I have, I'm going to have to go back and get more large tubes, I'm pretty sure. But basically I'm going to go ahead and do this, if I can find the right keys, of course. Like so, and this is going to go and start making our first limb. And this is going to be repeated on both sides, or all eight legs I should say. Uh, it will take me a few minutes to do this. I will take care of this, and I will be, bring you back. And there we go. So now for the next part. Um, I probably could be setting the rotational limits and all that stuff on these, but I can work those out once we get everything in place. So now what I need to do is I need to make... Uh, this is going to be our shoulder, so it's going to be lift... Well, first half of our shoulder, I'll say. It's going to be doing the forward and backwards. And now I need to add a couple of, another set of rotors to be doing the up and down. And I am not expecting too much of actual vertical lift. Uh, what I do need to do is... I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this. Let's actually go back to the slope. Not that I care about weight, but we'll do it anyways. So we're going to do like that. We're going to flip her around. Like so. And we'll throw another one here like so and then we'll go ahead and put our 
rotors. So I'm using advanced ones. I know I don't need to, but I'm using them anyways, just because they're there. And plus, the fact is, the fact of the matter is, if they're advanced, they might be might be better. You never know. But I'm gonna do do it like this. I'm gonna have to start labeling these ones as I go, and then before I start putting anything on these, I'm gonna have to set the braking torque on these to the 1,000 mega newtons or whatever it was. Or, yeah, something like that. Anyways, uh, I gotta charge up my jetpack and uh, I will get this done. I'll bring you back. Okay, I'm just finishing them up now. Uh, I decided to name these the knees because technically that's what they're doing. They're lifting up the legs, so they are knees. I have set the braking torque on them too to max because now we're gonna start adding some weight on here. And we're gonna go to light armor blocks and I'm probably gonna go out a little ways. Let's Get back to the right block here. Uh, nothing like a phantom mouse wheel, huh? There we go. So I'm thinking probably eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's see how this looks in third. And I'm starting to realize this might be a little high off the ground now. We'll just have to make the legs a little bit bigger, I think. So that's eight, so then probably because once I get to the end, I'm still going to be going down 45 and then straight down after that. So let's make it 10. So that's going to be 10 like so. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then at the end of these ones, there's going to be... Actually, from here, I think... From here, we're just going to start sloping down like this. Go 45 to about... Probably to about here, I think. And then I gotta get the the tensors put in, which is gonna be what allows the light to actually move without ripping itself apart. That was the the spring idea I showed you over at the over there somewhere at the landing zone. Yes. So yeah, let me uh, get this all worked out and bring you back, and hopefully those rotors will hold up under the weight. All right, so here's what I got. Uh, oh. Sort of like an optical illusion. I thought that leg was closer than this one, but it's just the way I'm at. I don't really see it. So I'm sort of wondering. Oh, I missed one. Sort of wondering uh, how long these legs are going to be. Like I, I'm pretty sure I should be able, to, could make them reach the ground and have it look somewhat okay. And it's starting to look pretty freaky. It might have to come down a little bit. Uh, I probably should have made that body a little bit wider. Had the legs going up much longer than this, but. This should work. So now that's I've got these are the, the main actual driving rotors of this. So now all I have to do is actually set up the set up the, the rotors and their limitations. Now this is where these actually come in handy. So what I gotta do is I gotta find out where zero is on this one. The zero is always gonna be the black line here. So let me uh, get down here and save my jetpack fuel. I had a bit of an incident. I was uh, I was up here doing this leg here. I was about halfway up, and jetpack got critical. I went down and I, about a hundred feet from the ground. I ran out and I hit the ground, and I lost all the reactor parts that I had. I, I spent ten minutes making crafting those things with the assembler and had to remake it all and all that stuff. But anyway, so now that this is zero, so when I go and access a terminal, I gotta make sure this. Uh, that zero is going to be my limit, but to determine if it's my upper or lower limit, it depends on which way the leg is going to turn. Oh, the leg is going to be moving backwards because that's going to be the front, so it's going to be pushing backwards on its main stroke. So it's going to be my lower limit is going to be zero, and since it's going to be going this way about 15 degrees, my upper limit is going to be 15. If the numbers were reversed, if, like, for instance, we go to the front one here, the front one is going to be, as you can see, it's at zero, but since the leg is going to be moving forward and backward only in this area, it's going to be zero and negative 15 as zero is going to be my upper limit, and negative 15 is going to be my lower limit, even though it's going into, like, the 300 degrees, you're going below zero, so that's going to make uh, the negative 15 your lower and zero your upper. And then when I get over to here, I'll probably end up doing like, uh, I might even do maybe even 20 degrees on those. And then do like a negative 10 plus 10 here. And go from there. And then the same thing with these ones here. 
if you look at I have to make sure I look at each one of them because it all depends on how they got placed so I got a zero here so it's gonna be I'm thinking this actually might be as far down as it goes I probably could go down a couple more degrees I could probably even do like a because the up is going to go plus, so it would be plus 5 as my upper, and let's say negative 10 or 15 as my lower, because it will be pushing down. But on this side here, it's going to be reversed. It's going to be 0, and then negative 5 is my lower, my lower, or, yeah, negative 5 is my lower, and 15 is my upper, just because the piston has been swapped around on the other side, just to sort of, I don't know, just make things fit a little bit better hopefully uh, my biggest issue is going to be that the legs don't actually hit over there and i should have had uh, the frame out a little bit further i oh, know i'm sure i could rig something up where i just cut it down the middle add some atmospheric thrusters and some merge blocks and just join it back together but that's a lot of work It'd be easier just to rebuild the thing but we'll work with what we have and see what we can get even if see i'm also my uh Timing setup is going to be a little bit different. Usually what I do with something like this is I'll have one, if you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if that's where you number them, uh, yeah, face the right way. I would have one, three, five, and seven all go at the same time, and then two, four, six, eight combined. But what I've noticed is sometimes it tends to want to do like a bit of a, a shift. So I'm going to try to get a four-way timing where it'd be, let's say, one and three, two and four, five and seven, eight and one, for instance. Sort of like a, how a car engine has like that cross timing set up. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get all these set up and then uh, we'll start working on the, the springy parts. I just decided to hop on the ship for a minute to charge up my suit. I never actually pointed this out, but uh, this little ship of mine seems awfully little compared to the spider. I decided to park it over here, just just be safe. I have got one side done. Uh, I'm going to keep it to about a 16 degree sort of movement, so it's going to be shorter steps, but it should work. Oops. Um, they're not properly spaced, like the two in the middle are, they're basically all pushed in. The, it should be timed out a little bit different. I just want to make sure that nothing's going to actually bang into each other and have it not destroy itself as it walks. But anyways, I will bring you back when it's time to get to the next next step. Okay, I'm about ready to do a quick test here. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to throw a timer block down for now. I've, uh, I haven't set it up to a four-way movement yet. Uh, this is just the shoulders being set up, uh, the actual so-called quote-unquote knees, are going to be fairly simple to do because it's just a matter of how high I need them to go up. Oh, I had a timer block there already. What do you know? It's almost like I was planning this, but I wasn't. Anyway. Uh, oh, I actually had enough. What do you know? Right, so uh, right now I just got it grouped into one and two, and uh, one and two is going to be one, three here, and two and four on that side, and vice versa over there. We'll go over here. This is going to be a relati relatively simple one. Uh, I have... We'll go with a two-second delay for now. I think we can get away with a one. Uh, once this thing's on the ground and actually under its own weight, it might be a little differently, a little different. So, okay. Knees, shoulders, and all. I can think of it's heads, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. We're not getting to that complicated this one yet. Anyways, reverse, reverse, and then go over here, and then timer block, and start. Okay, um, so now I'll just go ahead and start this, get out of here, go into third person. And I think, I think it's actually reaching its proper limit, not quite. But what I could do do something like this and we'll just bring the uh, that's not gonna work because it's going to reverse hmm I was gonna say we could turn the speed up but going fractions isn't the easiest what we can actually do is uh, this timer block we'll stop that 
Okay, hopefully it doesn't reloop itself. That's actually a two second delay. That's eh, it's not too bad. I'm sorry, I gotta think about that for a second there. Alright, since we're here, we'll do see if we can actually do one point five. Okay, it does work. And then we'll go here. And just because they're actually reversed, I have to do it this way instead of changing them globally like that. And why did you move? That was unexpected. Anyway, uh, let's start the timer. Oh, that's the wrong button. And let's see what happens. Okay, they're actually reaching their limit, which is good. Oh, this thing's going to be freaky looking. I did figure out how to get down to the ground if we need to. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just add a few more posts in each corner and just cut it down one block at a time as we go. Anyway, so that is that. I'm going to go ahead and stop this. I'm going to probably get rid of that timer block because I'm going to need to make a few more of them anyways. And now I need to get the, the limit on the knees. And we can actually do this right here. I wanted to keep the lower limit at zero. I'm going to set the rotor lock on this for now just to be on the safe side because I've noticed when you set the limits even with the velocity at zero it will move to a random position all right so we're currently at zero so what I have to do is I have to go up here and find out exactly how far down I want to go so I got zero here uh, I do want to have it go up a little bit so I'll probably do like a five and negative fifteen so we'll do a quick one up check on this and I'm gonna go fill my jetpack or fill my suit actually. Alright, so uh, knee left one. That is locked. Okay, the lower limit is gonna be uh, we're gonna try a negative five. And we'll try I also have to keep the timing in with the timer block and with the other ones I had a range of moment of six range of movement of sixteen. So the upper limit should be 11. And change that to 1.5. And unlock. And let's see what it does. Come on, let me up there. Let me up there. I want to see. I was zoomed out. I don't know why I wasn't doing this. Okay. Let's do the jetpack. Okay. Let's get in here. And quick as a bunny. Uh, left knee will reverse you. Uh, I know not to hit the de detach, and I will won't. And that's that's down. Seems doable. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to traverse tra traverse terrain properly. And hopefully I can speak properly. Anyway, uh, let me fill myself up and uh, I'll get the rest of them all set up and timed out and we'll see how it looks. Alright, I do believe I have something. We still got more stuff to add to it, but uh, if I have to, I'm going to be adjusting the, the actual torque of everything down the road. It's actually pretty strong from what I can tell. Well, let's go ahead and start this up. Let's, uh, let's not mess around with the third person. Let's just do it this way. Let's go up and see how it looks. Okay, the velocity of the, the actual knees has to be up. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll stop this. Uh, that's going to be the advantage of having uh, four timers too. Because I can get the lowering and the movement forward and backwards. You know, I mean, the, the horizontal and vertical movement separated. But, uh, anyways, let's, uh, let's go ahead and adjust this to... Let's not do it that way. We'll do it this way. We'll do that to negative 5. And we'll do this to 5. And just see how it looks. See if it actually works. I actually do that to 5. Yeah, I did. Let's start that. Let's not do that. Let's do it this way. 
Okay, those ones got reversed. And those ones got reversed. I... Yeah, something's out somewhere. A little bit of fine tuning. I got a. Did my math wrong somewhere on the up and down or the limits. This could work. It speeded up a little bit more, but you know, once I get to the other timing, it'll be 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 good. So next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding uh, some doubled up springs. Yes, everything is completely ass backwards on this, but it doesn't matter. This isn't final. All right, so at the, going on from here, I'm going to be having two sets of rotors, uh, one locked to allow movement this way, and one locked to allow movement this way. Or at least I'm thinking, because what's going to happen, I don't know if you could be able to see it. But as this leg pushes back, the foot or the end of it actually goes arcs inwards a little bit, so I want to be able to create enough sort of spring for that to go in. Uh, I'm looking at these legs here, and I think I can actually get away with one, which makes it a lot cheaper than trying to do what I did because I didn't realize that these rotors <laughs> cost so much. Long tubes or large tubes and all the other stuff. So, yeah, I think I, I can get away with just one. And if I get away with just one, then that makes it so much easier. It's just not going to be powered or locked. Anything It's just going to be locked, and then we can get down to the feet. So I'm going to stop this. I'm going to top up again. i got to go find some more ice, too, because that thing's just about out. And uh, I'll bring you back when... I think it's time to actually get it down on the ground. Uh, we're not too much... Not much left to do. Uh, actually, we'll get the timing set, and then we'll pr drop it out of the ground. So I shall, I shall see you shortly. Okay, so the legs are all set up, all built, anyways. I just wanted to go uh, take apart some scrap, get some uh, free parts out of it. So now for the, the feet, the feet are just going to be nothing more than uh, I'm going to put a rotor here as soon as I get my rotation properly. Rotor there, and. That's not the right button. Uh, I'm going to be using plain old wheels. Uh, what I didn't notice originally when I first started playing is not only is there, hang on, uh, wheels with, with suspension, but there's actually a straight up wheel on its own. And I'm going to use the straight up wheel because in theory, the wheel should actually add friction, allowing it to walk. And that was always been one of the biggest biggest hurdles in trying to do something like this is there's actually no proper friction with the ground but in theory this should work come on why are you flip it over like that it should work just put the tire on the end of the rotor gives it some friction and the, the rotor is just going to have a braking force applied it's not going to be powered or anything like that no limitations it's just it's just basically a ro rotating point to give it uh, sort of some wiggle room so when the leg moves back that the, wheel, the foot actually has a little bit of a twist to it and that's just to prevent the thing from actually tearing itself apart it probably will uh, if you've seen the control panel which I'll show you in a second here uh, you'd be quite amazed at like how many different colors there are in that list now uh, I'm running out of energy again. We'll check this in a second. It was already starting to look like a rainbow. I was getting purples and blues and greens in there. I'm actually curious to see like how far the color actually goes. It's gotten to the point now that the only thing that's actually white in there is... Um, oh yeah, the, the groups that I've made. And I'm out of motors. Do I have any more motors? Should have some tubes in here. I did have to make a whole bunch. I do. Good. Alright, we're almost done. We are almost done. All that's left is these tires. And these tires are actually relatively cheap. I think it was... I can't remember how much they were. They were just like... Uh, uh, just iron, I think. Oh, they actually do use large tubes. Oh, 
We got some big ones too, some big five by fives. All right, so that is that. Now I gotta access a terminal. Let's actually go over here, save the flight. All right, there is my very colorful rainbow list. This is all the main grid. The main grid just went orange and now I'm getting all these different colors. And as I've named them, they've gone to different colors. But since these here are the only ones that haven't have a use, I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna set my breaking force to see. I wanted enough to hold it in place, but at the same time too, not have it drop back. So we'll try 1.1 for now, and that is basically it. Oh. And that's just about it for me, too, until I get that cockpit charge up. So all that's really left to do. Uh, I was thinking about the, the timing, too. What I might do is I just might get the legs in the positions they need to be. We'll put one timer on there and just have it uh, reverse everything at once. And I'll do a save before we do that. And if it works, then we'll go with it. If not, we'll, I'll try to get into like a two- or a four-step time timing on it. Not really looking at not really looking at getting it steerable. I have thought about different possibilities of doing that. Uh, pretty much all of them resulted in the timing being thrown out and not working as intended. So I'm just going to leave this as a straight up walker. It's going to keep on walking until it runs out of power. It's going to traverse the, the, the surface of Mars. Anyways, uh, let me get these last few little things finished up and I'll i will bring you back for the fun part. Is it going to break the game? Or is it going to be quite something? Okay, I think we're ready for a dry run here. Uh, the timer block should be already set up. One, two, three, four. Everything's reversed and back to one. All right, let's start her up and see what happens. Let's actually get down here and see what it looks like. Definitely a little bit of bounce. That's just because it might be a little different once it's on the ground. Alright, let's see how it looks. Oh, so far so good. Uh, let me see if I can get a little bit of decoration on here and then we'll we'll lower it down. Okay, it is a new day for me. Uh, yeah, I'm still a little on the sick side, but I have finished. I have, well, more or less finished. Uh, as you can see, it's got a bit of a creep factor going on now. Uh, I had a few incidences, uh, all jetpack related, uh, which wouldn't be too, so bad if uh, there wasn't a random chance of losing parts. Uh, I did lose quite a bit of stuff. I've lost probably 50, at least 10,000 frames. Uh, the problem is, is when it gives you the warning, oh, jetpack low, or jetpack, first jetpack low, the jetpack critical. Well, when you're about this high up and you get the jetpack low warning you should have time to be able to get down to the ground right about here uh, I was probably about probably about here by the time I did hear jetpack critical at that time I was already out of fuel and bounced off the ground and I lost my elite tools and lost a whole bunch of plates and I lost reactor parts and some superconductors and all the more reason to go mass, mass start mass producing stuff uh, I have been, again, rethinking the whole steering mechanism on this idea. Let me actually change, get the sun in its face so we can get a little better look at this guy here. And good morning. There we go. Yeah, so uh, for as steering goes, I have thought of different ways of doing it, like possibly slowing down the velocity of one side so they don't move as much but then that starts throwing timing off where the legs don't move as well as they should I thought about using gyros too for uh, you know uh, use a gyro override for the yaw to get it to sort of pull a body over we could actually try that you know it's an idea I haven't thinking about because I know I can do the override all the mechanics I should probably get these out of here I could probably use them I'm actually out of iron, surprisingly. I did have to do a couple of silver runs and a gold run and an ice run and all sorts of stuff. So what was I doing here? I was doing uh, gyro. Yeah, let's put a 
big gyro right in the front here and see if this will actually help or see if it will actually do anything. It's, I can always put a button panel on top because who wouldn't like to ride this giant spider and I need parts and I don't think I have anything. So uh, let me get this in place and then what I'm going to do is to bring you back, I'll get the, the post down and we'll start lowering down to the ground. Doesn't look like we have too, too far to go, so I, I'll see you in a moment. Okay, I have everything ready. Uh, so what I've done is I've actually moved the timer to the back there. I put an antenna on it just so we can keep an eye on it. Uh, I got the gyroscope up here, and I haven't put a button panel here so we can control the thing. Uh, I have checked the controls. Yes, you can uh, set the the override, the yacht override on the. I'm sorry, on the gyroscopes, and you can actually do it by the button panel here. Uh, the only thing I haven't checked yet to see if you can actually reset it, because you can in increase the yacht override and decrease it. But is there a way to actually disable it, like turn it back? So we might have to try to figure out which is which, is which like uh, where it's at zero. So it might be sort of one of those things where we just have to mess around with it a little bit till we find out what we want. What we want. But first, first, we have some fun. I'm going to save first. Okay. Now, I know my physics w well enough to know that it's always good to be recorded when you do stuff like this. Uh, I haven't seen anything yet myself, but I've heard that things can go horribly wrong. I've got... Geez, I got about 40 different grids here, so we'll see what happens. Okay. So now we go through, taking them out one by one. Until the legs touch the ground. I don't want to drop it down too hard. But you get the drift. Hopefully those legs are going to be able to support it. Don't tip over That's a good thing I saved this. I'm going to try this differently. Okay, I have saved again. And it appears that it only wants to drop so far. Now, I think the best way to do this is just to run in and just start grinding. Just pray to God doesn't kill me on the way. That was interesting. Did I break the feet? I did. Really? Huh. Interesting. Hmm. No, I lost a foot too. Came down too hard. Well, I think one thing we can do. Okay, so we're going to try things a little differently here. We're going to try to think outside the box. Now, I'm hoping I have enough supplies to do this. Uh, it was a bit of a grind trying to get all this stuff together, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually trying to put atmospheric thrusters on here. Uh, I should have enough to make a cockpit too. Uh, and what I'm going to basically do is just put the. As soon as I, there we go. I'm going to put eight of eight facing down, and I'm hoping this is going to be enough. And this will just uh, slowly descend it and I do realize it's going to drift and I hope I, that's what I'm saying I hope I have enough because realistically I should put two facing back two facing forward and side side just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere let's see if I have enough to actually do it but you get the idea I'm going to quickly do this and then I'll bring you back when see if we can actually fly the spider <laughs> okay I had enough and I also had one of those ideas too one of those great ideas. I might actually leave these on here. Uh, not only can we have a flying spider, but if it ever gets stuck somewhere, at least I'd be able to get it out of, out of its predicament. All right, let's get a good old cockpit going here. Um, hmm, no, we don't need the button panel anymore. Uh, that's facing the wrong way. <laughs> let's put it down properly. Go here. And yes. I know there's some sort of trick to remember exactly which way it is. What was I doing black? Oh, I think I, think I sort of remember. All right, so that's good. And now uh, it's actually good that I have a large generator on here. I tried to put a small one on here, but even though the 
the small grid variation or the, the small grid version of the or large grid version of the small reactor should generate more power it actually generates the same amount of power just like this one generates 15 megawatts and a large reactor for the small grid still 15 megawatts you'd figure it would be a little bit more but that's not the case anyways uh save has been done except for the cockpit so i'm just going to go ahead and see what happens we find out the easy way the fun way that's why uh Kind of working. Yes, perfect. Don't break those legs. Yeah, go up here and it worked. Yay! And because I'm taking this off, I'm actually lightening the load too. Another question is, is it actually gonna walk without destroying itself or destroying the ground? Okay, make sure there's no thruster I'm gonna end up going into. Huh. I was right about how many I needed. Eight was just barely enough. Alright, uh, let's get that out of my hand. Let's lower it down to the ground. I am gonna keep that save of it being where it was. That's so creepy. Alright. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and actually group those. Let's actually get into here. Control panel. Uh, oh yeah, the rainbow panel here. And all the thrusters, we'll group those. There we go. Uh, Chidi drive, there we go. Chidi drive, it's a spider, it's supposed to walk, not, be able to, not to be able to fly. So far, so good. All right, let's get out of here. Let's do this, and now we're just gonna set up the timer. All right, so uh, timer block one. Uh, the delay was two seconds on that. Actions, go to groups, and it was just basically one. Reverse one, reverse two, reverse three, and reverse four. No. <laughs> That's a good thing I ha that happened here. And what was the other one? Oh, yeah. Then we go back to the timer block and we start that over. Okay, and now I can actually use the butt panel to start it. And uh, Where is it here? There it is. I know I should be using the search, but anyways. Uh, set up actions, the timer block is just basically going to be, this one will be start it, and that one should be stop it, that really should be it. Alright, let's go for a stroll. Uh oh. <laughs> <sighs> well, we learned something new today. I learned something new. Rock is very soft. But, I think it's got to do with the velocity of the legs. So let's slow this down a little bit. Okay, back to where it is. Uh, everything has been done except for a save, which I've just done. Uh, yeah, so what I've done is I just basically... I uh, brought the speed of these from 5 down to 2, uh, the shoulders down from 1.5 to 1, and then I increased the timer to 3 seconds. And what I was going to do when I was actually in here, and since I've got the atmospheric thrusters running, I'm going to hover up a little bit with them, get out, and I did bring some more uranium too. I got another 150 on me, and that was another thing I lost too, was about 50 kilos of uranium, so... Uh, next episode, we're going to be heading back over there. There's a few other things we're going to start working on out in that general direction. Uh, at the same time, too, I want to try to check out the other moons for other projects. Uh, what was I doing down here? 
Oh, yes. The fun part. Okay. See what happens. I actually liked having that buffer there. That kind of helped. I think we'll, this might be the easiest way to do it. Except for and now. Let's try not to leave a big hole in the ground. We'll save that for later. Come on down, you. Watch my ship. Come on, this worked so well the first time. Oh, yes, yeah, because I was hovering up. Bang! Let's try that again, shall we? Okay, one more time. Uh, this time I didn't hover up as much. And I think I'm just gonna... Try to stop from stopping too much. Uh, this may kill me, but uh, it's nothing new. Don't you hurt my ship. There we go. That's perfect, right there. I don't think we left any holes this time. We'll find out in a second here. Yeah. Yes, I know. I don't even think they can actually hurt me. Uh, and it was also mentioned that they only do damage when they're actually thrusting. And it's technically not thrusting, it's just hovering. Alright. I will do another save right here. Okay. Now, if I, as long as I don't make too many more saves, at least I have a few to go back to. Uh, at what state I'm going to leave this thing, I have no idea. We'll probably just let it go and then continue on. Come check back on it in a few episodes, see how it's doing. Alright, so I just go in here. We go in... Nope. That's not what I want. I had to group those. Yes, I did. Okay, then we really need to do that. Let's go in here. And we'll turn the old cheaty drive off. Okay. Now, let's see what happens. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that ground is really tough. Or soft. I wonder if it's because it's technically dirt. You know what? I think it's because there's too much gravity here. That could be too heavy, too. Uh, one other thing I can try... Just taking the shell off, just go right down to the frame. Let's actually see how heavy that is. Yes, if you're new to the channel, this is nothing new. You can be seeing a lot of this. Oh, down she comes. Okay, let's see what we got here. Uh, I'm sure the grid's a little... Excuse me. Well, fine, I'll just do it from down here. Uh, surprisingly, it was the ground that gave out info click. Yeah, it's not technically that heavy. Alright, well, let's uh, try without that. Okay, I'm done. I got it saved. I took most of the weight off, so we'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully it doesn't destroy the ground on the way down. And yeah, we're good to go. Now for the fun. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of plates out of that. It's like 11,000. Okay. Now you'd think that those thrusters would be helping out a little bit more. Uh, probably just starting to deal with the load. And touchdown. Okay, I'll do this, and I'll, I'll probably just save it. You know, by the looks of it, trying to get something this big walking is going to have to be on a planet with a low gravity. Uh, my original plan was the moon, but uh, sadly, the moon isn't as flat as I thought was hoping it would be. Uh, I do want to go check out Europa and Titan, see what kind of landscape we got there okay and now for a save and off we go all right so i do have to actually I can just do it from here the cockpit was only here just for the whole g drive 
right, we'll shut that off. And did I rechange that? Uh, let's see here. Yes, I did. Okay, good. All right. Let's see what happens. I don't hear any explosions. Oh, there they are. Yeah, the ground is just too destructible. Yeah, you take a bite out of the ground there. That's a good face plant. Hmm. Really should be some sort of shock absorber there. You know, similar to what I've got on the legs there, but that didn't really work out too well. At least we get to see stuff blow up. But anyways, I think we're going to call this one here. I'll probably... Leave this on the dig its way to the center of the earth. And then, yeah, so next episode we're going to head back up there and get that ship up and running. We're going to head back to head back to home, wherever it is, and start doing a few things over there, get some more uranium going, and check out some more planets. But anyways, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave me a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.